What's up, gangsters? It's me, Neil Smith, Ashley King, One Way Fighting Podcast this week. And what are we going to do? Are we going to look forward first or are we going to look back, Rob Funk, our brand? I say we'll look, yeah, so we'll, we'll look back, look at the uh, the weekend that's just been. Um, mate, one of a fund by uh, Rob Font, um, stepped up and uh, just controlled the fight, didn't he, with his jab? Just looks so good uh, against like a tough Cody who. You know, people people question the chain of Cody, but you know what? Like it held up for all five rounds. To be fair, so I think there's positives to take away from both guys. But for Rob Font, though, what a performance by him! Definitely on to like, I'll probably say top three next. Definitely, like he set himself up for a big fight. Like, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it, it was interesting to see Petty Yan fucking come out and then. Um... First, he called out Cody Garbrandt, saying, I'm still going to get round to beating your ass. And then he called out Rob Font after that. And I think it's one of them. Rob Font put on a really technical performance that he said the jab was the, 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 the story, really, wasn't it? Yeah. He even come out after his claiming he had the best jab ever. Just, I've never known him for his jab before, but obviously off the back no. of that performance, you know, it was a decent jab, but jab's a jab, mate. You know, I, you know, I'd rather be hanging him and have the greatest straight and just just kill people with it, like than just jab someone's head off for four or five rounds. <laughs> it is what it is. If that's what he wants, he's the king of the jabs. But <laughs> 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 well done, you. But um, yeah, mate. I mean, I, I feel bad for Garbrandt because I wasn't a big fan, but you've got to admire the kid, like what he's done. Yeah. And, you know, I just feel like he's. He just had a tough fight there, mate. He went and he was more technical. Yeah. He didn't get to sit down on any punches, really, and, and throw something big back like he did in the, the Aston South fight. And I think yeah. that's what he was looking for, but he never really got to compose himself. Yeah, I agree. Like, I, I think that there with Cody, he was just beaten by a guy who was just better. I feel like he stayed control. Uh, sorry, he stayed controlled. Because obviously, on the last podcast, this is what we were saying. We were like, he gets into these kind of. Um, these like really kind of heated exchanges and stuff, and he, you know he, get, he always gets caught and everything like that. Um, obviously it happened both against TJ Dillashaw, Sean, and then it happened against uh, Pedro Munoz. Uh, but with this one, even when he got caught, he just you know didn't get involved. He stayed composed and everything like that. You could probably make the argument where maybe in this fight he probably should have. I mean, he definitely should have threw more. Uh, but I, I do think that was credit to uh, Rob Font for just not letting him settle, like, as you said, keeping him at bay with the jab and just throwing him off his, uh, his uh, rhythm. So, um, yeah, I, th- I think it's just more credit to uh, Rob Font. But I think Cody would definitely be back, though. I- I- I'm excited to watch him again, like, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's one of them things now. I, I-, I kind of get tired of, like, um, I- I- I'm an idiot. I look at the forums. And people are like, oh, you know, do you reckon he'll fight again? I mean, was he... Obviously, yeah. He'd come off the back of the win for Aston Sal, but he'd lost two prior yeah. to that. He'd got like two, three. Three, three out of the last five, hadn't he? And yeah. it's like, it's MMA, man. It's it's a one-punch sport. And you you know, I know he didn't get knocked out or nothing, but you can't. People just keep saying, oh, he'll be back. Of course he'll be back. How old is he? He's only young still. He's only young. He's 30 or something, 31 or something, I think. And he, maybe I, I might be wrong on his age, but I, I do get tired of that, though. As soon as someone has a loss and they're a big name, like Garbrandt was to his former champ, and people are like, oh, he'll be back. I mean, you look at Pettis, the amount of times Pettis suffered losses, but then kept coming back. And sometimes people just have a bad run, bad run for a run of bad form. Yeah, like, yeah, well, that similar situation. Uh, what what you're saying there of like um, people that have like a, like one or two losses and you think well that's it uh, I used um, Donald Cerrone as a really good example mm. so back a few years ago um, I think he lost maybe like two fights or something like that like on, on the bounce and all that uh, and then he went out and he beat um, Alexander Hernandez uh, mm. and then he beat um, Alexander Hernandez and there was another guy off the top of my head, I can't remember, but uh, it was too good. Oh, no, uh, Al, Al-, Al- Quinta, that was it. Beat Al oh, Quinta, that, yeah. yeah. And uh, and that, that's what I'm saying. Like he beat two upcoming guys, really good guys, 
And uh, and at that point, people were still saying, you know, he, he was done. Obviously, yeah, now's a bit of a different situation. I generally believe he's in a row now. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is, but but I think I think the point of what what you're saying is, and I, I can I completely agree. It's kind of this mentality. People have like a boxer mentality where it's like in boxing, you could be like what forty and oh, and you lose one fight, and most people the end. Then you're tired. Yeah, and it's like MMA is just not that sport. It's like as you said, you can go on a two fight losing streak. You can lose your debut. Lose two fights in you know what I mean? You can go out and lose two fights, come back and win like another ten, and boom, you're there. It's just a different sport. It's just different, isn't it? Yeah, I mean the, the, the boxer mentality is right because you got Mayweather saying he's the greatest of all times. You got people who've gone out and fought a hundred times against whoever's in the rankings. Like Chavez was like about 50, 60 before he lost his first and then went on to win. And he had about 110, 120 fights, and he had like a 79 win streak at one point. And it's like, well, I'm the best because I've never lost. He fought 50 fucking people, man, and you picked your fights. I mean, he fought yeah. some of the best, but he picked them at the time. You know, take Canelo while he's young, take Pacquiao when he's old. It, it's one of them, like, it, it yeah. is a boxing mentality. Like, you lose one, that's it. And then if you, you manage to get a clean record, then you're the greatest. Not always the case. But... No. It's like, you, you'll never find uh, an MMA fighter with, like, a 50 and a record, like, it just wouldn't happen. Even even if Khabib would have continued, he would have run up against someone who would have would have, would have just had it, had him on a night. Like you know, he was what 29 and 0? 29 and 0 because everyone wanted 30, you know. Um, but he eventually would have run into someone. You just do. It's just there's always yeah. someone else, isn't there? Well, there's arguments there, isn't there? I mean, I'd like to see Oliveira against him, but I'm not convinced yeah. so I don't know I think it'd be a good fight but again I don't know if he's got that toughness for Khabib yeah yeah I agree with that one I think I think I think with with, with Khabib it's, it's a bit it's kind of frustrating for the fans like us fans because there's so many good matchups for him and it's like he definitely left too soon but obviously yeah. kind of there's no way he's coming back there's just no way I feel like he's kind of He's loving being a coach, isn't he? That's like his newfound thing. Uh, he's got this new MMA organization as well that he that he's gonna do. So I think he's just kind of preoccupied with all that now. So I don't think he's gonna come back, which is shit to be fair. Yeah, my gripe is I I, I hate all these people who go, you've got to do it in two weight classes. You don't. You can just be the best. I always think McGregor should just stay the feather and you know maybe done the double weight things. He beat Alvarez, but just go back to feather because. I feel like he lost a lot of what he had. But he could, Khabib cut so much weight to get down to, yeah. you know, light. And it's it's a matter of he could have gone up to welter and still been strong at that weight. And I would have liked to have seen him against someone like Usman. Oh, that would be... OK, fant fantasy fight then. Who, who have you got for that? If that was to happen? I think Usman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll be honest, I was going to say Usman, you know, yeah. Like, mate, Usman like, right now is uh, he's one of I the best. I feel like he bullies people and then he'd get someone that he couldn't bully and then he'd have to find a new thing to his game. I don't know, his cardio is through the roof though, isn't it? But then again, Usman, yeah. I don't think he's gassing, is he? No, no. Nah. Well, I think because because they both use the skill. I mean, they both come from, a, obviously, that wrestling background. So... They're used to it. They know how to conserve their energy, and it's like it's just second nature for them. So they don't get tired with that game plan. Um, you know, pretty sure if it was a striking match as well, I'll probably give it to Usman as well. Do you know what I mean? So I, I'll probably yeah, that that that'd be a good fight if that was to happen. Like obviously never will, but that'd be no, good. yeah, mate. It's not going to. He's not going to come back now. I don't think. I think he's done. I think he's his mum, mate. Ready. It's his fucking mum, isn't it? His mum saying he's not allowed to. Mate, that's the worst thing for the hardest person to say. Me mum won't let me <laughs> Me mum said I'm not allowed. <laughs> me mum said I'm not allowed, mate. Yeah, me mum said I can't fight. Sorry, mate. I still still makes, shit, it's it? still not any less scary, but it is the worst thing for the hard person <laughs> to say. <laughs> it really is. But, uh, but we'll move on to next week then. So... It's the heavyweights, isn't it? Two, on the two cards, you've got Rosenstock, uh, Augusto Sakai, and Walt Harris uh, Tabore, Marcin Tabore. Start with yeah. the big one. So, Rosenstock, strike me. 
the last fight was still yeah. good, wasn't it? Yeah, it didn't really, it didn't look that good. It's kind of gun shy, really. Um, so I think, I mean, obviously that's a big fight for Rosen Strike. I mean, he, he needs a win, like, and he needs to look good doing it. Um, that guy who who is fighting, what, what's his name Augusto again? Augusto Sakai. Augusto Sakai, lovely He's name. He's decent. Um, yeah, so I think his last fight was his last fight against Overeem. Overeem, yeah. Pop. Um, Pop. Did you see it? Yeah. He Six looked like he was fight, Unbelievable. He, he was winning that fight, weren't he? Up, and, up until when he got the third took or down. I think the fourth round, Overeem started to take him down. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know if it was just doing championship rounds. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that was the main event. I'm sure that was the main event. Yeah, it was. It was five rounds. It was the, four, oh, was the yeah. fourth round. Over, Overeem just covered for like three rounds. Yeah. He didn't take too much damage. And... The first time you really see over him do that, he must just be worried about his chin, maybe. But mate, he was dropping yeah. volume on him. He was drop the sack guy was dropping volume on him. And then that fourth round got tucked down. And then in the fifth, it was about two minutes into the fifth, he just started dropping these elbows just like that. Bang. Yeah. I think it was about two, three elbows, and the refs just stopped it because he was getting decapitated. You can tell you, you can tell you he, he was training with the Curtis Blades. In that fight, like uh, with his ground and pound and stuff, you could just tell the difference training with a guy like Curtis Blades and that. Um, but yeah, so obviously, him coming from that loss, he's obviously got a lot to prove as well. Um, bit of a toss up fight, to be honest. Like, I don't know. I, from my perspective, I quite like fights like this because I've got no connection towards any of the fighters. So it's like, I don't get that like nervous energy. Do you, do you get, you know, when you really like a fighter and you want him to do well. And you get that horrible, nervous, like, energy. Um, don't know that with this one. So I'm actually just, yeah, just going to, like, proper this. sit back and do it. So oh, sorry. In, I'll give you the litmus test for it. In contrast, Overeem lost to Rosenstrike, but dominated that fight up until the fifth when he got knocked out with the random yeah. dig. Because Overeem was on his way to winning. Yeah, he was. Round, dropped by Rosenstrike. Overeem Remember his left. four rounds. Yeah, he, he just have a split yeah. it. But it's a bit bit random, isn't it? The the both fours, one's won, one's lost, but one had a bad performance, the other one had a good performance up until the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah to be fair, yeah. It's it's a bit I mean they're both coming off a loss. JDS got beat by a uh, struck just before his loss. And then you look at the record for Augusto Sakai, it's it's not as impressive. You got uh, Blagoy Ivanov, uh, Tabora, Marcin Tabora, Orlovsky, but he's beaten the last six or seven before the loss. So, yeah, it's one of them. Yeah. I think with this one, if, if uh, Rosenstrike shows up and he's, you know, he's not hesitant and he generally, you know, fights how, fight, fight how he fought against JDS, um, I think he'll do. I think he'll do well. To be honest, mm. uh, I, th I think the other guy. I think I don't know if he's going to have more of a, of a wrestling base. To be honest, I don't know if he'll try and get it down to the ground. To be honest, um, but um, it's quite intriguing. Like it's a big fight as well because the heavyweight division now. I think it's pretty. I say it's pretty stacked top half. To be honest, you know, and there's a bit of. Um, I say on clarity, but so we know we know Derek Lewis is fighting for the belt, isn't he? That's yeah. pretty much official. Um, I think the winner of this fight could potentially get Stipe. You never know. I mean, who who would like? Obviously, Stipe is not. Gonna, I don't know if he's going to go straight into fight for the belt again. I don't know. I think Dana White probably will have him too. But when's he back? Say if he wants to. How long is it before Stipe's back? No idea. He's got no fight lined up, has he? Um, I don't know when he's looking to fight next. To be honest, so. That's what I'm saying. The winner of this fight could fight Stipe. Um, mm. It makes sense as well, though, because I kind of, if I was Stipe, it's, well, I say, if, if I was Dana White in the UFC, I wouldn't want Stipe to go in to another title fight on a loss. Have him, have him go out and get another win and get that momentum back and everything, and then just builds more hype, in, doesn't it? Do you know what I mean? Well, the, the other problem you've got is if Engenu wins against Derek Lewis, then John Jones yeah. might come about and he keeps coming out with he's not going to fight, he's not going to fight. I think he's building a bit more hype and momentum for it. 
because he knows now the crowds are coming back in. He wants that to be a big, big, big draw. And what do you something, John Jones? You see the size of him? He's stacked. Looks big. Looks big. Yeah. What What do you think about the whole John Jones situation? Like now that obviously more information's come out of like. Yeah, it was a John, John Jones asking for like big, big numbers. Um, you know, what, what's your kind of thoughts on it? Do you, do, you, do you think it's the right call for John Jones to sit back and wait and you know bide his time, or do you think he should, you know, kind of fight now? What, what, what's your thoughts on it? I think he's going to have big cardio problems when you see the size of him. Have you seen him? It's like he's yeah, tall. he's big. Massive. And if there was ever a thing thinking he was on steroids, his jaws like all half moon face, what they get. I mean, obviously he's not going to be. Is he going to be that daft to do that again? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, then say it's big dick pills, but it's one of them. He's got really big. He's got to feed all that muscle. Um, it's yeah. again though, an, an anger new fight. Is that going to go on to the latter rounds? Yeah. And that's the thing. I think with the if you, if John when you break down John Jones and Ngannou, I think that's a major factor for John Jones the cardio. But I, you are right though, mate. Like first time fighting a heavyweight with all the extra muscle and everything like that, does he take away that big factor that he would have had the cardio? Mm. Um, I just meant though, like, what's your thoughts on kind of his, his actual so oh, his situation? Back. Yeah, just like the whole like sitting back and waiting. Not, like I feel like he's in his mind. He's like, I've got no urgency to go out and fight now. Let me just keep training, everything like that. But you're not getting I any younger, are you? Money. Like... I see his point with the money because look, look, look at McGregor and that. I mean, what they're earning. But at the same time, McGregor and that. I, I don't know how it breaks down his pay per views and it. But I mean, McGregor has got a bit of a record and stuff like that, and he, he went and threw the thing on the bus, but John Jones is hitting pregnant people and stuff like that. He's not as marketable. <laughs> but at the same time, everyone wants to see the bad boy. It's like Mike Tyson. No one yeah. never tuned in for Mike Tyson. He was done for rape. You know what I mean? And it's... He's still marketable. I just feel like... He, he's got a point, like... He, he, the money he's made is nowhere near the money that some of them have made in recent years. And if he's going to fight Engano and potentially, I mean, he's never going to say this out loud, but that's a fight that could just break his perfect record for the disqualification. Yeah. And he's going out to fight that and then potentially lose what makes him so profitable and not make a bomb off it. He needs to make his money with this fight. And if he gives him this fight for like two million, instead of, like, a good, healthy 10-plus, then he's mm. going to be in a position where if he can go in and get knocked out with one punch, simple as. He's fighting at a different weight class, so he's stepping up, he's losing his cardio, he'll be losing some of that mobility. I mean, remember when he come back and fought uh, of and Sam Peru? On the same prove, yeah. Slow and lethargic because he hadn't been fighting regularly. But yeah. Whether you call it Rick Cage rust, ring rust, whatever, he's going to be... Having that ring rust, and he's going to be heavier. Yeah, I, I feel like. Really yeah, I feel. I feel like with John Jones, I feel like because I've been thinking about this quite a lot. To be fair, like, does he deserve the money that he's asking for? What What even is he asking for? Like, what's the actual truth? Because you know, none of them have kind of obviously Dana White came out and said this big large amount. John Jones actually said I wasn't asking for that much. So it's hard to tell, but he's obviously asking for a, for a high amount, obviously, because then there wouldn't be an issue, would there? I think with John Jones, it's kind of like, maybe he thinks he's bigger than what he is. And when I say that, I mean, for hardcore fans that have been, like, I say hardcore fans, but if you watch John Jones from that time, when he when he first won the belt from Shogun Hua, um, and, you, and that, that kind of rise, I mean, he was a superstar. But obviously, MMA wasn't as big. It was big back then, but it wasn't as big as what it is now. So yeah, if he, if he was doing that, but this one to say, if he was doing that now, well then I think he would be a superstar. But I don't. But obviously, it happened back then, 2010, 2011. You know, it wasn't that big. And obviously, his last few fights, he hasn't really looked that good, has he? Really, he's had these close fights, so it doesn't really build momentum. So you, so you just mentioned McGregor then. McGregor's, in my opinion, McGregor's are just a completely different guy. And it's like, you know, he deserves all the money that he's getting. I mean, he's pulling in. 
massive numbers because people want to watch him fight. I mean, you know, he back then beforehand he was predicting these fights, he was winning, he was exciting. You know, people that I, I'll always tell the story. Like I remember getting on the bus back from work, and there was two like teenage girls at the front of the bus, and their conversation was literally about McGregor. It was McGregor versus Diaz, and I was like, yeah. "What the fuck is this?" I've ever had any anyone you know talk about John Jones like that. No, it's like I just think the star power of McGregor was just different. You know, he brings people in. I'm not saying John Jones can't have that, but does he have it right now? I don't think he does. I think he's kind of living in the past, to be fair. Well, do you think does, maybe, that make, does that make sense? Do you think maybe that's what they've said behind closed doors? Because yeah. they might have just said, look, you're not getting that much, but if you want anything near it, go build the hype. We will have the dead yeah. fight. Go have a back and forth with me on Twitter. Call me an idiot. Call you an idiot. Whatever. You're not getting this much. You're not getting that much. When it finally comes together, Enganu's had a chance to defend his belt. Then we've got a heavyweight champion that's defended his belt. There'll be the should Stipe get the rematch or you. And it could just be this whole big, like, volcano. Yeah. Off. And then people will buy into the story. Because at the minute, it's just John Jones has moved up heavyweight and he wants to just fight the champion because he's, bar the disqualification, undefeated. I think, yeah, and there's another point as well that I said previously. It's um, it's kind of what, what he's doing has been done before by Daniel Cormier. And I feel like when Daniel Cormier went up to fight Stipe, that was kind of obviously a bit like, you know, first first guy to do it, to come from like heavyweight, to go up and weight to fight um, for heavyweight. I think obviously Wandy Gator did it the opposite, around, the opposite way around. He started in the heavyweight and then went to fight for the lightweight belt. Um, so obviously Danny Cummings was the first guy to do that. And I feel like it's kind of like he did that, you know, he shocked the world and he knocked out Stipe. Obviously went on to have the trilogies and everything like that. I think it plays in John Jones's fact, uh, John Jones's benefit, the fact that the champion's not Stipe, it's Nganu. So it presents a different challenge, which I think is obviously goes in his favour. So if he was to do it and he was to beat Nganu, it'll be a little bit different, if that makes sense, because it's like, he went out there and he beat Nganu. Um, but yeah, I agree. I think it's just, at this current moment in time, I don't believe he has that star power that he either once had or he thinks he has, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know. I think I think John Jones just needs to kind of reevaluate and be like, "Well, why are you doing it? If are you doing it for legacy? Because if so, just take just 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 take the fight just, or, or take a fight against Stipe. I think Dana White was like quite happy for uh, Stipe to go and fight John Jones, and that's a good fight to make. I think it is. Imagine he goes out there, beats Stipe, then beats Ngannou. No question, like you're the best. If he does that, he's the best. But, mm. you know, what, does he want to do it? And at what price? Yeah. I think I think, I think think you're 100% right. I mean, I don't want to keep rehashing, but we, what you were saying about the girls on the bus, I mean, where I'm out in Grand Canaria and that, every time there's a McGregor fight, you can say what you want about them. But all of the Irish, they're yeah. all out and they're all in the bar. And we, I don't even know where fucking... John Jones is from, like Texas or Atlanta or something, I think. Isn't Al he? Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Is New Mexico. That, that's Texas ways, isn't it? I, I think. Um, fucking bad geography, the English. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's New Mexico. New Mexico, yeah. It's, that, it's down south, that's that. Yeah. But the point is, I didn't know that, whereas every single Irish bar is packed full. Yeah. Packed full with Irish people who all have a cousin or a sister that know them. And, you know, they're telling you all about it or I live down the road from him or something. You know, they can't all live down the road from him, but they'll all tell you that. <laughs> they're and all it, his cousin. Yeah. But it's, he's got a big cult following, like, and yeah, it, it, you, you're 100% right on that one. I can't disagree with you. But um, give us a go back to the fight. You, you're still oh, yeah. saying, I'm going to say uh, Augusto Sakai. Oh, prediction wise. Mm hmm. Yeah, I just feel he's gonna bring with, it. Yeah, I'll be honest with Rosenstrike. He just made his last performance, he just looked awful. So I think I'm probably gonna agree with you to be honest. I don't like I want Rosenstrike to, to come out and swing and you know do well and everything, but 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. If, I don't know if he's just going to be like he is in, in his last few fights and just be gun shy and just be scared to throw anything. So yeah, I think I agree with you on that one. I think um, that Augusto guy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm going off. I know we got the win against JDS, but Enganu rushed them. And to be honest with you, I don't want to be scared of that train coming towards you. But he just went backwards. Overeem pressed them for quite a few rounds and he caught them late on. Uh, and Cyril Gaines fights. I mean, while it wasn't the most exciting, he just controlled it. And I feel like Overeem might have been a step up for Sakai. But until that fourth round... He was controlling it. He was hitting volume. I don't think it's going to go that far. I think he's going to take him in like the second or third. Really? Yeah. Mm. Ground the pound or good knockouts? Do you think uh, they go back to like, class people? But you can you can do it. Do you reckon? Do you reckon he does it by like KO standing, or do you think it's a ground and pound? What What are you thinking? How do you, How do you think he gets stopped? I think he throws volume on the cage wall. He was throwing loads of knees on over him. I think he's going to catch him with something like that standing. I think he's going yeah. to press him. I think he's going to come up with a similar game plan and just work on getting into them championship rounds because a bit of takedown defence. And I think he, he takes it, I'll be honest. Yeah. I've got to say, though, I do. I actually do agree with you, to be fair. Like, I do think he takes it. But I just, if if I was in a strike, if he, again, if he fights how he fought JDS, Mm. I think I think he'll do I think he'll do quite well to be honest. I think he'll be easily finish him. But it's just from that last performance, the whole mental blockage. I just yeah, I don't really see him getting through that to be fair. So then that's why I'm saying the other guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um so second on that card, Walt Harris and the uh, Marston Taboru. Yeah. Tabore. But that Tabore. Mar- that, <laughs> yeah, that 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 Marston to it's a better, it's a better. It's a better, it's a better. We'll just, yeah, it's a better. We'll call him Marson. Yeah, Marson, my boy. He's um, nice. Mate, he, he, he's good. Like, he's good. I've watched him. I've watched him for a while, to be honest. Like, um, he, in his last fight, he beat Greg Hardy. Um, yeah, seen it, yeah. He beat Greg Rothwell mate. as well, didn't he? Yeah, he beat Ben Rothwell. He, um, who else is Marson to be? Um, he, uh, I remember his fight against Fabrizio Vadum. He lost the fight, like, but he just kind of it, it was kind of one of his first fights with such a high level guy. Like, he did he did well to be fair. Like, he wasn't purely dominated. He did well, went to a decision. Like, um, uh, I think he got knocked out against Derek Lewis as well. But he was winning that fight with the, with the, with the wrestling and everything like that. And then mm. typical Derek Lewis, like, just you know, just comes back and just hits him just one shot. Um, but this Marcin Tabor guy, he's a very good wrestler. Very good wrestler. Uh, Walt Harris struggles with wrestlers. Um, so yeah, I think I watched yeah, the Overeem. Awesome. The, the Overeem loss. He lost the Volkov as well, but I haven't watched that yet. Um, have you seen that fight? He gets TKO'd by Volkov, apparently. Yeah, yeah, I watched that fight. <laughs> um, it, Vol, Vol, he, he just controls it, to be fair. It was quite a pretty easy fight for him, to be honest. Just... That's the thing about that Volkov guy. He just knows how to use his reach. Unlike mm. Stefan Struve, like he just he knows how to use it. So it's pretty one sided affair that one, to be honest with, with that. Um, but yeah, like that what, what Harris made, like his story. If anyone doesn't know, like his story is really, really like powerful. Um, you know, with his stepdaughter. No, go on. Well, you don't know. No. Oh shit. Um, so like his uh, no, his stepdaughter. Just, 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 just let you know. I, I like some of the stories. But no, this one's massive, mate. If I'm no, sort of watching the UFC and they start going on, and it's going to be like I'm fighting for my family and all that, I'm I'm off to the fridge to get a beer because it's three no. o'clock in the morning in the UK. And can I be fucked listening to that shit? Pardon my language. No, this is like <laughs> no, mate. This was on the news. This was on the news. Like this. All oh, right, go on. Yeah, no, this is this is just like oh fucking you know she fell down the stairs and all that. There was she. Um, <laughs> she I feel bad now because this is actually like a proper really bad Go story. Go on, tell me. I'm on a ways. I'm on a ways. His stepdaughter, um, she went missing. She went missing, everything of that. Uh, big thing, big like national search in America and everything to try and find her. Uh, long story short, uh, she got found dead, um, raped, dismembered and everything. It, it, it was really bad, oh. to be honest. She was like, was she about 16, 16, 17? 
Uh, it was yeah, mate. It, it was massive. So, when was that, been there, was that? That, that was so that was when he was meant to fight Overeem for the first time. Remember the fight got rescheduled. Remember, I didn't know. I I, I never picked up on this story. So that's going back about yeah. four five fights, isn't it? So about yeah, two, after years. this, uh, it was around about two years. Yeah, about two years ago, maybe two three years ago. Um, after after this, like, I have a little research on it. It's uh, yeah, it was quite quite powerful. Like, um, Mate, I've got two it, kids. It, I can't read stuff like that. It just makes me yeah, angry. Makes me angry. Yeah, it's it, it, it's powerful to be fair. Like Dana White and a lot of other UFC fighters were putting out, um, you know, like reward money and stuff like that. Like, honestly, maybe the MMA community came together and everything. It, it was took on like a whole other narrative. Like it was it was massive at the time and. Obviously, I, I'm I'm saying long story short, the search went on for quite a, quite quite a bit, and in the end, she was found. Um, the the did murderer they did actually get found as well. What sorry? Did they catch the guys? Yeah, caught the guy. Uh, apparently, what what had happened was, um, so this guy was basically doing work on his car. But I think he pretended to break down, basically like that, and. Um, yeah, basically waited till she kind of like walked past or something, and then kidnapped her and everything. It was it was horrendous. Like, um, so that fight got rescheduled with Overeem, obviously because of what he was going through. Yeah. And his comeback fight was against Overeem. That was his comeback fight. So there's obviously a yeah, lot of emotion and stuff like that. Oh no, sorry, you like, sorry, I'm I'm thinking there. Thinking, you know, he got he got beat, didn't he? Yeah, he TK, got beat. TKO'd, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, it's a bit obviously just a really, really like powerful story. So Walt Harris is obviously a bit of a fan favorite, like obviously just the way he handled it was was really well. I was um, on the ways, mate. That's fucking horrible. Yeah, yeah, it was horrible. It was said mass, massive story, like. Um, but no, obviously, but with this one though, like I, I, I think I think Marson with the wrestler, and I think he, uh, yeah, yeah, think he doesn't like. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, lads, I'm gobsmacked by that. Oh, I've missed I, that. I know, yeah. That's the Can problem being up mate? in Gran Canaria sometimes, mate. Some news just goes by you because, you, you you know, it's one of them, like, you're out in the sun all the time. If you're not looking at your phone, yeah. you don't see it. It's not like no one sits in and watches telly of a night. Everyone's on the balcony. I've got, mate, I've got to say Gran Canaria, though. Like, I, I went there a few years back for Christmas time. It's unbelievable. So good, yeah. and it's not it's not that big of an island, is it? Like you can pretty it's the much just Canary Island, like lad. It's just so like Christmas Day was like twenty seven degrees, lads. Yeah, it was warm. No, I, I, that's, that's was there, I know wasn't anyone it, watching like, who does that night? Was there New Year? Oh mate, it's, it's nice, it's unbelievable, lad. It's like it like rains about four or five days a year, and when it rains, it's like twenty minutes, and then it's dry after about another twenty minutes. Oh, it's just fantastic, lads. Oh, good. So yeah. it, it's so nice. Like we um we did one of the excursions, like the um do you know like up like proper up in the hills and everything like that? Yeah, all the yeah. old houses and everything. Yeah. But the views from there, unbelievable. So good. Yeah, mate. It's just just the best place, lads. Love it. But um, so you're calling to Bora to to Buru. To Buru to Bora. To Buru to Bora. Yeah, I, I, I'd say him. Like, I mean, obviously anything can happen. Walt Harris can obviously knock him out, yada, yada, yada. But uh, yeah, I He's think... on a four-fight win streak there as well. He, he's he's in form. Um, like you say... I just think... I think the wrestler, mate. I think, I think the wrestler, I think... I don't think... Is it going to be the most exciting fight? If Marcin Tabora wins, probably not, no. You, he's, a, he's very wrestling heavy, but he wins fights. So, why not? Yeah, you know what, mate? I, I don't mind watching some of the wrestling. I mean, as long as they're doing something, they're proactive, they're yeah. trying to pass guard or do whatever, you know, trying to work for a sub or some sort of um, submission by punches or whatnot, or TKO. If they're just holding them against the fence, I'm not interested. But, yeah, so I'm going with you. I, I agree, mate. I think I, I was going to say beforehand, um, I feel bad about what Harris now, I know that, though. Um, yeah, it, going against the favorite ben, This is what I've been waiting to talk about Diego Sanchez and Fabian of <laughs> <Mace>. <laughs> Mate, like that, 
I don't know how you uh, felt about it, but I was so I read it first few days ago when it came out. Get rid of I that. I thought dude. it was a joke. I thought it was a joke at first. No, I didn't believe it. I was just like, you know, just, just because obviously it's it was just that recent where you know they were fucking best pals. You know, you know the conversation go, was going around like, are they lovers and all that? So then I read it today. I was like, oh, a few few days back, and I was like, they split up. I was like, what's going on here? And then you sent me that um, that link, didn't you, today? So having a little read and stuff like that. Mate, he just sounds like a proper bitchy ex, doesn't he? Just one of them. Like, girl, I think he sounds yeah. like. So for, for anybody <laughs> watching who hasn't seen. So I know Diego Sanchez has come out and said that he's got no power of attorney on anything because apparently he was his manager as well as coach and guru yeah. and fella. I don't know if he is his fella. <laughs> he moved in with him. So, yeah. now Diego Sanchez split with his missus and all that as a kid. See, I, I'm learning about this. This is this is funny. Yeah, I didn't know that. Didn't yeah, know that. but well, th this is what it said because he says in that that thing you went, he's got a kid and all this, and he's driving around in a free grand mare, and he starts like, saying stuff like he's driving around in a free free three thousand pound Mercedes Benz, and he's not doing this, not doing that. He was in a one bed flat, even though he's got a kid. Um, no, yeah. to stay yeah. with them. And it's like, if you had that, any of this was a problem at the time, you should have said to him, not waited until yeah. he split up and then told the world, just stop being a bitch. Just get over it, man. Yeah. Yeah, did you? But, um, you know, no one's, you, no one said nothing to you when you had them hanging upside down and you were chinning them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I um, obviously, with this, best thing to happen to Diego. And I think I, um, I think I texted and I say, and like, it'd be good if the UFC just take him back now, just be like, you know what, Diego, yeah, I'll come back here. We'll have you, we'll have you one last fight, mate. Now that you got rid of him, it's only going to help his career because now, now you like Bellator and all that. But they're going to be more open to working with Diego now. But it's just him. But with that, um, that Fa Fa Fabio guy, like, it was just, yeah, not going to end well. I don't, I don't know how they uh, split though. I, I want to hear from Diego. I want to hear from Diego what happened. Like, who made the decision? Why, why did you make that decision? He's made some statement that basically just says he, he no longer has power of attorney, this, that, and the other. And I think he's learning his lesson, maybe. Unless he does go get drunk and just make some big Twitter rant or something. I think he's learned yeah. his lesson a little bit and he's just sort of coming out with, he's got no power of attorney, and he says is whatever, just, we're, we're, we're done, we're not uh, involved wow. in any shape or form anymore. Um, Quite mature. There you go. But, I don't think people are going to pick him up. The whole CTE thing, with the, the brain damage or whatever that they were going on about, I think that's tarnished them now. I think he'll be lucky to yeah. get anyway. Unless he gets I do agree with that. Yeah, I completely agree. I think um, when you start having them conversations and then, you know, I mean, it was his fault because he publicly heard them. Everyone's heard that conversation. People like me have, have listened to that conversation on fucking Instagram. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's it, it's out there now. So everyone knows that there's some kind of like issues maybe and um, kind of more kind of the inside information how the UFC kind of, you know, deal with that type of stuff. So I think, I actually agree with you. I think if you battle at all, having that conversation, like, I don't know. You'd have to go through a lot of hoops, wouldn't you, to kind of, you know, make it happen. But I think, I don't know, I think maybe if Diego Sanchez just signs something, signs a disclaimer saying, I'm absolutely fine, goes for the test and everything. I don't know. But the is it just for one fight, though? Is, the other interesting thing is, where they're asking for medical records. So... Josh Fabius come out and said um, he's had addiction to like thirty different drugs or something. It was. Did you? Oh, uh, am I misreading it? He said something like he's got addictions to this, that, and the other. And yeah. They may be saying it's for CTE. They may just want his medical records to see if they just let him fight after a drug test or not. You know what? I think you know what I think you're right actually because I'm I'm just I'm just trying to remember the thing, but it was like. He was saying that Diego Sanchez was on steroids during college. Did you did you hear that? Uh, yeah, he listed like a couple he, of things like painkillers and steroids and yeah. I think he was trying to push that he was on the coke and stuff like that. But I don't know if he yeah. came up to use that word. So he was saying that, and then you know what you're saying about medical records. Mm -hmm. um, he did. He was. He was like. 
So I was requesting them from Diego Sanchez's ex or something like that. Or Diego was, was working with his ex to get the medical record or something like that. But then he found that he found out that um the ex-wife was working with Dana White and Sean Shelby and Hunter and all that. Um, which and then he just said, you know, big red flags were going off. But then and then in his next breath, he was saying that Diego Sanchez has got special needs. Did you did you listen to that? I just read it through the thing, so I don't know if it covered everything that he was saying. I didn't, I didn't yeah. his, uh, audio. Yeah, after it was after work, it was. I had a bit of downtime, and I was like, "Oh, let me just go on YouTube and stuff like that." And then, uh, and then I found like a little voice. It was a bit. It was an interview with someone, um, and yeah, he was saying about like just just loads of shit, just proper slagging them off. To be honest with you, mate, like there was someone who went out and said. I've got Diego's best interest at heart and everything like that. I mean, you don't, you don't know because you're proper dragging him under the bus. Say he's on steroids during college. You know what I mean? All that shit. Like, you know. Mate, you know what? Go down you to the local mate? gym and just spot them. One, two, three, four, five. It's, you know, I know he's a professional sport, but you're effectively putting him in a position where he can be sued for every penny he made. You know, saying that he's been cheated. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it was, yeah, test yeah. To them things, and he says he was on drugs during that fight. Then whoever fought him and lost could turn around and say, "Well, we've got witness statement here to say that he was cheating. I want my money. I want my win bonus or whatever. I want to took yeah. off my off my fight record and put off, uh, and took off his. Yeah, he's messing up on his life career." That was another, you know, I just, I just remembered then. Another little weird thing as well was, uh, when he, you know, when Diego Sanchez fought Michael Chiesa? Mm. So, that Fabio guy was basically, he said, um, before the fight, the um, athletic commission went in, went into the uh, dressing room thing and they told everyone to get out, clear the room apart from Diego. And then the fight, and then obviously the fight happened and Diego Sanchez didn't throw a punch. Now, this is, this is Fabio's word on this, by the way. This is his his thing on it. And he was like, we trained all striking during that fight camp. And then you go out there and you don't throw a punch. He was like, again, red flags. He was like, red flags. He's like, um, he basically was saying that. Try, he was trying to insinuate that Diego Sanchez has made a back, like a back deal with the Athletic mm-hmm. Commission to lose to Michael Chiesa. I was just like, the only means it just didn't make any sense though, because like why? What why? Why with the Athletic Commission? I knew the guy this guy's being dead serious, by the way. So you know what, right? The Athletic Commission wouldn't get involved because no. bullshit. They don't make money off the UFC. Yeah, ma- well, this one this one trying to say, mate. Doing what they do in governing, but didn't make any sense. But it's the fact I'm saying it's the fact is this guy was just rambling on. So you know, just as as much like conspiracy stuff as you can possibly think of, and it's like, you know, he's. I mean, he's ruined his career. Like, because I feel like I, I can't see any other fighter going with him. Can you? No, lad. Oh. This, the, you know what? This is what I think of him. I think his next step is going to be fighting Jake all over Paul because that's all he's fucking worth. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Yeah, I, can actually, I can actually yeah, imagine this that. is fucking Jake Paul. <laughs> Another fucking Ben Askren knockout, just just clean him up, Jake. <laughs> take him, take him to yeah. the yeah. <laughs> I tell you, mate, I tell you what, that that'll be the, well, the only fight that you'll be cheering on, Jake Paul. Yeah, I'd, I'd buy forty nine ninety nine the pay per view to watch that. <laughs> I would as well. I would. It would be the only guy that we'll all cheer for against Jake Paul, like, and that's yeah. fucking saying something. Yeah, but um. We, we've gone on a bit, but I'll just touch on it briefly, quickly, because we said if it was time, but it's right on that time. So, la- last is, is Wilder, Fury, and Anthony Joshua. I just So, Wilder and Fury have signed to fight after it all kicked off. I said I didn't think it was going to get round to it, but apparently arbitration turned around and said you're contractually obliged unless you want to pay uh, Wilder 20 million or whatever it was, you've got to fight him. And Fiori just wants to fight, so he said, yeah. And AJ come out and just went, oh, you, 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 you know, you, you were talking shit, saying you wanted to fight me, this, that, and the other. 
call Tyson Fury for this, that, and the other said, you know, you, you're just a waste of space, whatever. Tyson Fury come back and said in tweets, shut up, I'll fight anyone. I'll fight you this weekend. 20 million bare knuckles to the last man standing. <laughs> I haven't seen a reply from AJ on this. I'm just wondering if he's going to. Because I think cause with, with Anthony Joshua, he's probably like, you know what? I think about Fury is he's actually serious with this. Like he generally would. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, like, so just to explain this one though, I'm again because I, I, I get a little bit confused of all this. So, obviously, yeah, fighting Deontay Wilder for the third time. If is it if he wins, then you'd have the Joshua fight, or the, obviously, does it just depend? The contract he was already in left Wilder with the option to have the rematch, and then yeah. Wilder didn't take it straight away because he was too busy looking for excuses why he lost. Oh, his glove was floppy. The suit yeah. I wore out was too heavy, which again is your fault. You wore the fucking suit. It wasn't Tyson <laughs> Fury. Tyson Fury never asked you to wear a forty pound suit. Oh yeah. I'm going out to a fight. Why don't I put a weighted vest on? Because that's a dickhead idea. Don't do it. Go out and feel fresh. <laughs> it's like doing CrossFit before your fight. What are you doing? <laughs> you know. But there were all these different excuses. His water was tainted with some sort of muscle relaxation. Yeah, I heard that one. Or, you know, I just... I, you know what? That That's one that they all seem to come up with. Because I've seen an interview with George Foreman where he was saying that that happened to him during the alley fight. I mean, it wasn't until, like, the 11th really, round yeah. that he started to lose. So it couldn't yeah. have been that bad. He was beating the crap out of Ali to the point where he gave him Parkinson's. But these are, you know... These are excuses. So I just feel like, you know, Wilder should have took it straight away. But I think he's just given himself time to try and get yeah. back. And whether he is or isn't, I don't think he can pick up that much gain. But he might just pick up enough to get a bit of movement so he can land one of them bombs. Yeah. Wilder's knockouts. Yeah, yeah. I've watched a few highlights of him, yeah. Mate, I mean... He's not the one punch technically guy. gifted boxer. He's like tall, lanky, but muscular and just throws wild punches. But you've got yeah. to give the guy the credit. I mean, everyone was saying he was going to kill most people. He loses. Well, I thought the first fight, even though he knocked Fiori down, he lost. I mean, yeah, I, I, I watched that but... fight. I thought he lost. I, I was a little bit unsure how boxing scored, to be honest, but like. On the rounds, you know, you get a 10 I, I still whatever, think with the knockdowns, he. I still think with the lock with the, with the knockdowns, um, I still thought Tyson Roy won that first one. Yeah, I, yeah. I and so do I. So um, do I. Yeah. Um, but again, you, the judges, mate. Judges never let it go to the judges yeah. if you don't want to get a bit of disappointment. But um, yeah, yeah. And the second one was just comprehensive, like you know, so aggressive. Or any Tyson Fury, just just proper, like uh, was aggressive with it. Like he said, didn't he, on the Joe Rogan podcast? Because I watched them actually. <clears throat> on the Joe Rogan podcast, and he was like, "I noticed from the first fight when I when I'd go forward and I put him on the back foot, he didn't like it." Um, but he and did it was that just after like he got that, that little crazy knockdown. Yeah, so, yeah, that's sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can understand the mentality. You've been knocked down like that, and then you get back up and you just cover him for the next round or two. But he got up like not let that happen. Although he was down, out, and just plowed through him and looked like he could have gone on to win it. So. Yeah. In my eyes, he was, you know, that's the rules. What do you, so, what, what do you think happens in the in the third fight then? If you if you have to like, you know, we'll, we'll probably do another video close to the time to break it down. Like, or just I kind still, of fair. I still see Fury winning. Um, you see, I think he's fighting out of Cronk Gym. I think he is at the minute. I seen him putting stuff on about Cronk um, at the minute, and. They like that's where Tommy Haynes was out of. If you remember Tommy Haynes, um, the Four Kings had a with Sugar Ray Leonard and uh, Roberto Duran, and they were like just a powerhouse gym. These aggressive, powerful fighters, but he's got to learn how to fight on the back foot, which is like a whole new concept for him because he is a bully. Yeah. And he goes at him, and it's whether he punches as hard on the back foot because if Tyson Fury keeps pressing him, he's still going to punch with the same ferocity as he does when he lunges at people. It's a hard thing to yeah. do. So if you're on the back foot from Wild, Fury's seeing it and he's moving constantly. As you go, I, I see Fury win. I do. Yeah. Do you, think, to... um, 
<clears throat> Sorry, go on. I was going to say, Wilder's always got that power. If he hits him, you know, yeah. Fury might make that count the second time, you know. But would you say that if um, if Tyson Fury was to go out there and beat Wilder and the, uh, yeah, for the third time, then obviously you set up the Joshua fight, beat Joshua. Do you think that would be it? Because from a non, you know, I don't know too much about, you know, I can't really name yet a, a lot of heavyweight fighters in boxing apart from them three um so like who, who are, oh and andy ruiz hey, yeah, who else you've, next you've yeah. got you've got people out there i mean none that get you excited at the minute to be honest with you you've got your yeah, no. daniel dubois the bars come off a loss there but he was looking like he was going to be the next joshua still could be just come off a loss um you, know, you got your parkers and stuff like that i mean there's a good healthy heavyweight rank ranking at the minute but that being said I feel like Fiori will go on for a few more fights but it'll well it's his mental health look what happened last time yeah that's what I was thinking is he, is he just doing it just to keep his mind kind of you know active yeah I do wonder joke. though I saw him on ESPN this week when he signed the, the, the Wilder fight and they were introducing him, saying he's just bought a multi-million pound mansion in in Vegas or whatever it was. Um, and he's going on, it's my town and all this. Vegas is the last place you want to be if you've got a drug addiction in the I past. was about to say, yeah. Fuck it out. <laughs> and they went, you bought up all the Versace that there is to buy here. You've just got this, you've just got that. Is he putting a front on there or is he going back to old ways? That's a good, yeah. I don't know, it's just... He's just portrayed this whole thing on... He did, like, a series on ITV2. I'm just going back to Morecambe, and I'm just having a quiet life, and he sees some kid by the river and asks him if he's got mental health problems. Yeah, and now, yeah. now he's in Vegas, buying mansions, Versace, this, that, and the other. It's my town, Vegas. Yeah. I don't know. It just... I've seen him on the Tyson... Watch the Mike Tyson podcast with Tyson Fury. I mean, you're you're from Liverpool, lad, so you know someone when they're on coke if you see them. I am. I, I, I want to. Yeah. Uh, he just looks like it to me, and I hope I never meet him now in case he comes over and twats me and says, "No, I wasn't." <laughs> Sorry, Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> but he looks like he's on it. He's constantly yeah. and he's touching and and he just looks like he, and he's got a man bag and he sits in the whole interview holding his man bag. He just looks really uncomfortable being on like, and stuff. Yeah. I give that a watch, you know. I, I give that a watch. Like, I hope it's not. But he said, didn't he, in that podcast of uh, Eddie Hearn, he was like, "The only person that can beat me is me. Is I'm, I'm the only guy who can beat me." So, mm. like, have you have you just predicted that then? Like, you know, I don't know. But um, I'm I'm hoping he does it. Like, to be honest, because I, I wanted to be go out there, beat Deontay Wilder, then go I beat Joshua. Him. I love him. Like, I I think he's just class. I mean, I'd I'd watch him all day. Um, yeah. But it, it is a bit of a concern that, like, I mean, I'm I'm not saying this is breaking news or not. I'm just saying it's just something I picked up on. Just your observation. Yeah, you're just observation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, I'll have to watch it, like, and I'll uh, I'll let you know. Yeah, what, what's what the Mike Tyson before. one? Uh, have you seen that Tyson. before? Hot boxing with Mike Tyson. No. Oh, lad. I, I I do know he's got a podcast, but uh, I haven't yeah. watched that one with uh, Fury. Mate, everyone's got a podcast now. <laughs> it's it's hard to <laughs> one way fighter, mate. That's the number one podcast, mate. Yeah, that. <laughs> give us a few more weeks. <laughs> well, I'll take, yeah, well, I'll some fury, I mean. yeah, I, yeah. You know what? I'd, I'd gladly have him come on the podcast and just welly me everywhere if I got the views. <laughs> <laughs> Never know, mate. You know, we're mate we're that. Mate, wear that vest. Wear that vest, mate. He'll you know, fucking shit himself. And he'll just run away from you. Yeah. Death row. Flexing, lad. Flexing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lifting weights don't do nothing. No. But um, that being said, lad, have we covered everything? Yeah, mate. Yeah. Sorted it for... Um, obviously, no UFC this this weekend, but the one that... The card that we just spoke about, the uh, Rosen strike, is uh, next week. Just so if anyone's getting a bit confused. Good point, well made. Yeah, if they're just not run this weekend, it's bank holiday. So, 
Um, yeah, Ashley's going to have the week off because of that. I've got two of the people lined up and I've been trying to get them in. So hopefully there'll be two more podcasts coming on next week. I'll drop something on the Facebook page and the Twitter page. Um, maybe even the website because uh, I've got to update that this week. So yeah, other than that, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the notification bells so you don't have to find out on the Twitter page. It'll just update you on your phone so it'll go ding, ding, ding. Don't know why I added that. But yeah, have a good one, guys. Enjoy. See you later.